Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Endless Space with me, Get Daved. So this is a space-themed 4X turn-based strategy game, um, very much similar to if you sort of put Master of Orion 1 and 2, Galactic Civilization, and maybe a little bit of Sword of the Stars all in a bag and shook it, and then, you know, let one amalgamation pop out of it at the end. Um, this is kind of the game you would get. Let's check it out, shall we? So I'm going to be playing on a disc-shaped galaxy. I, I fooled around with a barred spiral galaxy and things like that. Oh, what the heck, let's do it. Medium, age, normal. I'm going to manually assign empires to all the other ones just so that we get to see every other... Oh, I am a Sophon spin-off. Every other faction. Uh, oh, the weird, they mirrored it. You crazy guys. Okay. Sophons are, by default, a faction based around research and they're pacifists. If you've seen any of my other LPs, you know that I am not a pacifist in these games. I like to follow the example of our friend Alexander the Great and be an enlightened killer. Well, that's being harsh to him. Conqueror. Um, so basically, I'm going to be using the, the nuanced research bonus to engineer weapons. Because, you know, science! Uh, difficulty, I'm going to bump it up to hard here. I am not a veteran at this game, so I don't know too much of the crazy stuff, but... Um, I'm not bad. Yeah, let's go for it. And I will be blue in this one, because blue is an okay color. Kind of wish I picked a more exciting one, but I often like to play as a more bold color. Like yellow! Okay, so when we start the game, you have three options for heroes. Uh, and it randomizes them every time. We also, I didn't start with any research technologies in ad ahead of time, so we're going to have to start at the very beginning. And honestly, expanding our ability to, well, there's a couple important things. I'm going to go for production first. Because this uh, first technology, this is a good first tech. It gives you plus 10 straight up. A lot of the building in this game takes place on the star system level. So, most buildings, the equivalent of buildings in Master of Orion 2, for example, you build for all planets in the system, which is great. A little bit less micromanagement for you. Um, we have exploitations, which um, are things you can build on a planet level, so each planet needs its own, to just focus on what you're going to get out of them. Terran planets are good for generating food, so that's what I'm going to do. Food helps your population go up faster. So, 11% birth rate. So if I can get my food up just a little bit. Alright. We start with one scout and one colony ship. And where am I in the galaxy? Ho looks like I'm on one of the arms, rather than connected to the core. Maybe they don't... Uh, have the pathways spiraling out though. This like Master of Orion 3 and some of the races in Sword of the Stars uses star lanes so you can't fly freely in space right away. You eventually gain that ability but it's no good. Alright Investigator. Gas Giants, can't colonize those yet. Okay, Yellow Sun, that's a good start. Doesn't look very yellow to me. That's no G-type star. Oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. Yeah, that's the mnemonic for him. The order of star types. Now you know. All right, and we'll explain all the tabs real quick. This is a quick synopsis of your empire. 
This is a summary of the relative scores of all the empires. I didn't start with any technology, so I'm ranked last now. That will change soon. Actually, it may take a while. Depends how easy it is for us to find our first colony. Sometimes that doesn't work out too well. Uh, the research tab you've already seen me look at briefly. Mousing over this score summary. Can't. Just takes you back to the galaxy map. Diplomacy we can't engage in now because we don't know anyone. Uh, this lets us view our different fleets and design new fleet or ship designs. And the hero screen is what we're on now. So there's five different hero classes. So this guy's got commander and pilot, so he would be a really good guy to put on a military fleet because he's got two traits associated with commanders or you know fleet skill. Both these guys have adventurer. That's sort of a it's a bit of a wild card, and then administrator. So that would make this a good person to assign to the homeworld. There's not a huge difference between these two. Labor improves your food production. Wit, research, offense, defense, combat related, melee, combat related. I'm going to go... probably with the higher labor on this one. Wit is nice, is it helps your research and money, but uh, early on we're not so much about those, more about the food. Alright, conveniently on our second turn we got enough money for a hero. That was by design, I'll eventually be lowering the res or the... dang it. I'll be lowering the tax rate to take advantage of research and so on fairly quickly. Okay, we can't colonize anything yet. This is just not a particularly good... Actually, this planet's good. Low gravity. So there's different... Uh, biome types that dominate the you know, planet uh, climates. Arid is one of them. It's one of the better ones, and it's fairly easy to get the technology to colonize it. It also has low gravity, so it makes people a little happier to live on there, and production bonus, and more people. I take it back, that's a good planet. Uh, if I don't find better very quickly, I'm going to colonize it. I'm going to have to research technology, which means nine turns of waiting, which I'm not exactly keen on. I'm going to send the colony ship there. How about they're waiting? It would probably be more in my interest to colonize towards the core anyway. Alright, let's uh, recruit our hero real quick. Production first. Would have been nice if we had a person assigned to system, our only system. Would have been nice to have a person with both planet governing traits, but uh, could have been worse. Dust is the currency in this game, by the way. So food determines how quickly your population grows. Production is how quickly you can build things. Research goes towards researching new technology. And dust is your money. And again, early on, keeping these numbers up, especially before we have a lot of trade treaties and everything, is very important and kind of hard to do. Well, it's easy to get into that trouble. I think of SimCity as a good uh, benchmark. A lot of people get a little overzealous, develop too quickly, fly too close to the sun. Now, I'm not super big on getting money quickly, and if we get our people ecstatic, they do more for us. They work harder, our production values kept going up, so I'm going to go with that. Hopefully that'll buy us some research. Ah, Rimor. Small ocean. It's nothing spectacular. I would still like to get Jovanus eventually, but Jovanus. A Jovian system. Alright. Oh, Auto Explorer, I'll never understand you. The Auto Explorer feature in this game is. 
calling it adequate may be a little misleading. All right, ooh, Aldebaran. Low gravity, medium Terran. Ooh, that's really good. Is it too late to change your direction? Yes. We'll work towards it. Remor will be a good bottlenecking point. This is okay. Things are going to work out fairly well for us, actually. Okay. So we got our N-Way fusion plants. The important thing for that is this building that's going to let us... Or system improvement, as they call them. It's going to let us have higher production. And... Our population's about to go up. When you build a procreator, or a colony ship essentially, you do have to load one population in it. So see how in the cost we've got 70 production units and one person. It's not nothing. But I'm going to try to get one right away. Titanium 7D. So there's all these resources in the game, very much like Civ. Uh, this game... Ooh, large ocean. You know, these are not bad planets out there. Blue cat mold is a resource we can't exploit yet. Makes everyone happy, though. Cognition enhancing drug. It's the spice? I'm gonna call it spice weed from now on. All right. Could have gone faster, but we got our first colony. We've done it! Set foot on another planet. Right on, everybody. Welcome to Remor! So, ocean planets... Oh, wow, I don't even have the technology to effectively exploit that. These exploitations get better as you research new technology, and I am going to make one of my first priorities getting a better farming one, because getting your population up is important. So, you'll see there's these little population guys going up the side here. Your goal is to fill all these in. That means there's more people on the system. So, for every person on here, I would get three dust, two manufacturing, four research, and three food. Once there's an exploitation in there, it'll get... it'll have more benefit stacked on top of that. So the number of people gets multiplied by these to determine the net assets from this. Up here is the sum total of everything in the uh, system combined. So that's they all work together for all of their construction projects. And we start with the colonial base enhancement, which gets us a little bit of production to start us off. Also, it's at the lowest level outpost. In 30 turns, it will generate a little territory ring, just like our home world. And, you know, we'll be really happy about that. Also, colonizing... You only really need to get one colony a system to mark it as yours. Not that people won't attack you. They will. Uh, okay, we've got Arid, and I had some decent Arid prospects lined up, so I'm going to turn to Xeno Botany, or Xenobiology. This gives us um, an exploitation bonus and uh, a building, or a system improvement. So this will help us get food out of more difficult climates. Not really terrible ones, these are all pretty good climates still. And this will let us have better planet exploitations. And that can be a really meaningful food increase at this point in the game. So I'm going to go for it. Ooh. One unknown fleet, and they're going towards a very good system. You really do want to... I mean, you want to grow sustainably, and you don't want to have no military, especially with only a medium galaxy and eight other races out there, but... You know... It takes a fair bit of effort to capture a system from another empire, so you really want to... <laughs> you want to get as much as you can early on. So, as much as is safe, we're really going to be pushing the expansion early. Alright. 
in seven turns we're going to have the procreator which is good that's actually going to be hopefully faster because this will have a really significant impact on the production in the system Surma. Oh, I forgot to take a look at Phyton. Okay, Polar Tempest is a negative um, anomaly. Sorry, that's the term. So this can be negated later, but in the meantime, Baron Comets already have a negative 15 approval, and the higher people's approval are the is, the harder they'll work for you. So on top of the minus 15, and that goes system wide, by the way. So if you colonize a whole bunch of bad climates, minus 10, minus 10, minus 15, you know, these things really add up and can be very difficult to get full production out of the system. All right. A few exciting things happening next turn. Also, what are our prospects? Oh yeah, we're a little ways away from being able to colonize these things. Gas giants typically have more extreme distribution, so you'll note production is very high, uh, equal to what I'm getting out of my homeworld with five people. Just with one you can get that, but uh, no food. Kind of hard to farm on a methane planet. I remember when I lived on the methane farm, it was agony. Okay, Xenotourism is a nice exploitation, but there's a couple technologies that if you can get to them, like, oh man, magnetic field generators. The earlier you can get to that, the better you are off. Um, hopefully we won't have to turn to weapons right away, but I am going to start thinking about it now. And getting to, that's sort of a destroyer class ship. That one's not bad to have early on either. Decisions, decisions. I'm going to go with revealing a couple resources. This will just help keep everyone happy. And it's only two turns. Typically research does go pretty quickly in this game, though. A turn means quite a bit. It's Your turns will take you a little bit longer to do, more like this pace you would have in a Civ game. Uh, unlike Orion where you know one turn is kind of insignificant you can click through them pretty quickly this will have no meaningful impact on the system but I'm gonna get another colony ship because it, by the time we build this the population will have already grown by a unit so we are enjoying some good benefit from our farming on the homeworld already. Level up for our hero. It, so if it's a planet, a person assigned to a system, planet hero, as you build things, they gain experience points. More labor. Labor improves your food and your production. Fleet leaders get experience from killing stuff. Also, I, I'm pretty sure I turned off pirates. I meant to have pirates turned off anyway. In my opinion, they just sort of slow down the pace of the game and don't add too much in terms of, you know, anything fun and crazy. They uh, will show up. They sort of spawn on unexplored systems and then come terrorize you, basically. Uh, for weapons, it's a lot like Galactic Civilizations 2 if you've played the game or seen my Let's Play! Shameless self-promotion. We've got a Terran in this system. This will be a good thing to build in the middle. Because we don't exactly have a lot of financial wiggle room. Okay, so we've identified a whole bunch of resources. We do not currently have any planets with them. 
Welcome to my favorite song in the game's soundtrack. And if you're noticing, there's a lot of luxury resources out there. Ionic crystals, concrete artifacts, all of these things are so good. Actually, instant monopoly on concrete artifacts if you get this system. This has really good resources. Alright, we're going to have our colony ship next turn and some new research. The field of gunning. So yeah, Galactic Civilizations 2 uses the warhead laser gun mechanic for uh, setting up weapons and defense. Same thing here. Uh, battles aren't completely simulated in this game, but it's kind of similar. <laughs> it's close to it. Um, I do not really care for slugs for the mass driver cannons. Um, they're more effective at close range, and I prefer to shoot people down before we get to close range. So, you want to go with missiles on that one. Unknown fleet. Okay, that is just a scout, but I don't even like scouts. Let's move my guy around. This pathway is... Um, a wormhole, so we need a slightly different propulsion system to be able to travel through there. These other star lines you can go on very easily. These need more advanced propulsion. Uh, let's get that thing launched. Okay, Aldebaran or hmm. Two very good options. I'm gonna go for Aldebaran on this one, but just because I think it'll develop a little closer and I'll have, you know, two of the sides of that thing taken care of, so I should be able to nab Nirvanas a bit more easily. And you know what? I think we're off to a pretty good start here, so I'm gonna end the video. Well, yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. Next time we'll make that colony and see what's going on with this unknown fleet. I'm not really happy to see them, but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get a good fight out of them. I'll see you in the next video, everybody.